Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Hope and this week I wanted to do something a little bit different. So I've been seeing these videos going around on YouTube of people <clears throat> showing like all of whatever type of books that they have like on their TBR or in this case I guess on my physical TBR. So my physical TBR and my Goodreads TBR are very different. Um, on Goodreads I'm just constantly adding books that I see other people adding, things like that. And then on my physical TBR I've actually bought these books and I want to read them. So I want to show you guys all of the historical romances that are currently on my physical TBR. So I think it's like 70. <clears throat> I counted and I think it's like 70. So we're gonna see. Um, clearly I've changed my setup a little bit because I didn't want to sit in front of the bookcase with a ton of books missing because, well, I just thought I would look worse than normal. So I've just moved like a little bit to the side now I'm sitting in front of my window um, what Hades usually likes to play right here so I guess we're just gonna see how that goes but I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about these books some of them I don't really know a lot about them it's like oh they're just part of a series or whatever um, a lot of times if I have a book in a series and I really like it I'll just continue buying that series um, especially if I go somewhere and the books are like 75 cents I'm like give me give me give me so that's where we are I have a lot of books. I hope this isn't a super long video. Um, it probably won't be because like I said, I don't know a ton about some of these books. But uh, yeah, we're just gonna get started. We're gonna dive right in. These are definitely in no particular order because they're all just, they're all just thrown around. <clears throat> Sorry, my allergies are so bad today. I feel like I can't talk or anything else. But like I said, we're, we're gonna try our hardest. So the first one that I have is just like a lot of these are gonna be like stacks by, by a particular author. So first one that I have is a stack by Lorraine Heath. So we have When the Duke Was Wicked. Yes, love this step back. I've definitely used that for a step back Saturday before. The cover of this one is really nice. You can't really see it very well, but super nice, super pretty. And then also by Lorraine Heath. This is a Sins for All Seasons novel, and that is When a Duke Loves a Woman. Also love this cover. So I read my first Lorraine Heath book like this year. Don't know how I slept on Lorraine Heath for so long, but uh, I really liked her. So I started picking up her books like when I go out because I was like, these are great. So that's kind of where we are. Then The Duke and the Lady in Red. Also beautiful step back. Um, I'm especially likely to buy books if they have a beautiful step back. So excited to try this one too because I really like Lorraine Heath. Really all four of those I'm pretty excited to try because I also have Midnight Pleasures with a Scoundrel. The light in here is just not um, it today because you just can't see like how nice these covers actually are. I'm trying to look and see and it just looks white. And Hades has found a toy. So those four Lorraine Heaths just bought recently. Very excited to read. And then I have Counting on a Countess by Eva Lee. I absolutely adore Eva Lee's writing. So I'm picking up her books whenever I see them. This is probably the only one that I own right now that I have not read. So excited to try that one. And then I have, excuse me, excuse me. I can't win. <laughs> then I have three by Joanna Shoup. So I have two from the Knickerbocker Club. I have Mogul and then Baron, both from the Knickerbocker Club. I have not read any books from that series. Um, I've never even really seen them. I just came across two of these in my local bookstore one day, so I grabbed them. And then I also have the Heiress Hunt, which is part of the Fifth Avenue Rebel series. And I'm pretty sure that this is an ongoing series right now. So happy to start a new series because I think that's part of the Bride Gets Lucky, I think is part of that series as well. So happy to do that. Excuse me. Hades is just absolutely losing it right now. He's been so calm. Um, he got neutered the other day, so he was super calm. And now he is just wilding out. All right, I also have two by Maya Rodell. I really enjoy her writing style and her books are usually between like three and five stars for me, though there was one I think that I DNF'd, but that's okay. So these are the Gilded Age Girls Club books. I picked these up also at my local bookstore. Okay. Hey, picked these up at my local bookstore as well. I really like Gilded Age romances after reading the Joanna Shoup ones. So we have Duchess by Design. I am also just loving like the beautiful dresses in some of these and then some like it scandalous. So I think that this series is like in Gilded Age New York, but I think there's some like 
different like someone has a cosmetics company one of those girls that I read has like a cosmetics company stuff like that so I think it's always fun to see something a little bit different let's see next I have a stack by Eloisa James uh, I have quite a few Eloisa James books but I've read most of them so I have a couple from the fairy tale series I have the ugly duchess so that is going to be um, the ugly duckling I think beautiful setback use that for setback Saturday recently um, a kiss at midnight a Cinderella retelling I've said multiple times oh good everything's blurry I've said multiple times that Cinderella retellings aren't always my favorite but I'm really hoping that if I pick some by an author that I already love then I'll love them um, once upon a tower so this is going to be like Rapunzel I think and yes stunning love it okay and then the last book in the Essex Sisters series that I need to read, which is The Taming of the Duke. I put this one off till last because it is Imogene's story and I just really don't like her in the first two books of the series, which like I read those like second and third. The first one I've read was Pleasure of Pleasure, but I just don't like Imogene in those books. So I have put off reading her book, but I am hoping that maybe it's better than I think that it's going to be because I struggle with her. Anyway, then I have some from Lenora Bell, um, the Disgraceful Duke series, how, um, how the Duke was won. So I have not, I don't think, read any Lenora Bell yet, but I picked up one of her books while I was in Scotland, and then I saw a bunch more, so I started grabbing those. I've heard fantastic things about her. Another in the Disgraceful Duke series is If I Only Had a Duke. These covers are super pretty too. Love her covers. Um, and then the other day I was actually in the dollar store picking up like cat food and saw one of her School for Dukes novels which is What a Difference a Duke Makes. Another very pretty one. I love the white dresses on book covers too. So excited to read that. And then the last one by Lenora Bell is The Devil's Own Duke. This is, I guess, the UK cover. This is the one that I picked up in the UK. So clearly I assume that is the UK cover. Don't love these like covers like this as much as I love like the clench covers or even just covers with, you know, not that aren't like photographs, but that is really neither here nor there because the cover doesn't really make or break the book for me, but you know. And then we have some Stephanie Lawrence books. I am trying to read the entirety of the Sinster like first generation series. Uh, I have three books left so I'm really hoping to finish that series this year. I have to space them out otherwise I get kind of tired of them I guess. So I have those three books. The first one is The Truth About Love and that one is pretty. So most of the ones that I have left I think are like the Sinster connections, not the actual family. I do have one that is like one of the Bar Sinster. And then the ideal bride, which I think is kind of like political or something. Like he picks her because he wants to be a politician or something. Yes, a man destined for power, a future in parliament. He just needs a wife. I don't love the like political ones a lot for whatever reason. I don't really want to read a ton of politics in my romance, but we'll see. Then I have All About Passion. Oh, so none of these are about the actual bar sensor. So this is um, Giles Rawling, who is mm, someone's brother. And then I also picked up a censored next generation novel. <clears throat> I am so sorry. My hair is getting like fluffier and fluffier. It's so humid outside today. Um, so that is the game's lovers play. So I got this at Target on one of those um, like buy two get one free book sales and it is a really strange size. This is the size that like a lot of new contemporary romances are. So when it came I was like what even is this because I just think that's strange like that was really strange to me I've never seen a historical romance um, be this size so do you know if the sister next generation novels are all printed in this size or is that just target um, because I haven't ever seen them in stores ever like even secondhand stores and then when I try to find them online they're extremely expensive like I mean I'm talking like I think this one was even ten dollars which is Kind of high for like usually historical romances are like $8.99 and down so I'm unsure if this is like a new thing that Stephanie Lawrence said if this is just Target whatever if you know please let me know because I thought that was really strange 
And now I'm like, I have two of them, the first two in that series, and they're mass market size. So that annoys me to no end. I hate when they're all different sizes, but that's fine. Anyway, I have one by Loretta Chase. Silk is for seduction. And this one is oh, stunning. actually about like a modiste, like a, I mean, she's like a dressmaker, but I think that's the word modiste. So I think that's gonna be fun. I really like when fashion is kind of a central focus in historical romances because I think the clothes are so interesting. I like to be able to picture them. Then I have a couple by Kerrigan Byrne, another one whose books have been super expensive like to get her backlist. Like I'm trying to get the Victorian Rebel series and some of them are like $30 on thrift books. Don't know why that is, but that's a thing. So one of the Victorian Rebels novels that is going to be The Hunter. This is about like an actress and an assassin. So I'm kind of here for that. I This is like, is his name Christopher? Yes. So Christopher Argent and some of the other ones, he's like an assassin or something. So I'm excited to read that one. And then also the Devil You Know series. I have two books in that series, All Scott and Bothered and The Devil in Her Bed. I read the first one, which is How to Lose a Duke, or How to Love a Duke in 10 Days. Loved it, gave it five stars. So I am really excited to finish that series. And now that I finally have it complete, um, I'll probably finish it relatively soon. Let me just reach over here <coughs> and grab some more. Guys, I'm so sorry. My voice sounds absolutely terrible today. Not what I was going for, but here we are. All right, then I have one by Jennifer McQuiston, The Diary of an Axonal Wallflower. This one actually sounded super interesting to me. So her books are hit or miss for me. So uh, It Happened in Scotland, eh. Moonlight on My Mind, five stars. It Happened One Summer, DNF. So you just never know. But this one sounds really fun. It's like this girl and she ends up being like sick or something or she sprains her ankle, something like that happens, but she was like the belle of the ball and then everyone turns on her. So I thought that sounded really interesting and I think the love interest is gonna be a doctor. So here for that. The Beast of Beswick by Emily Howard. How many times have I mentioned this one in a TBR video? Um, really want to get to it. It's in my historical romance readathon, like TBR, so I'm really hoping that I get to it. But this, I think, is going to be a Beauty and the Beast retelling, um, kind of marriage of convenience sort of thing. Love both of those tropes. So there we are. All right, I have two by our girl Julia Quinn. These are both part of the Rogue Speed series. So I have the girl with the make-believe husband. I just picked it up um, last time I was in Shreveport. And honestly, this book is a little bit tattered and I paid like $4 for it. Um, and it's just like in pretty bad shape. But th this was the last book that I needed. So I grabbed it when I saw it. And then because of Miss Bridgerton is the other one, I don't really know anything at all about these books. <clears throat> I've read the other two in the series and one was like a road trip pirate marriage of convenience type thing and the other one, not pirate, road trip doctor marriage of convenience type thing and the other one was like pirates. So I don't know and I think those are both like three stars for me. Then I have another book by Sophie or a book by Sophie Jordan, Lessons from a Scandalous Bride. So I've only read one Sophie Jordan and I didn't really enjoy it. I didn't like the characters. So I'm really hoping that like this will redeem her. I've heard so many good things about Sophie Jordan. I really want to love her books. I just struggle with them personally. It just wasn't for me. So then I have a really large stack, not really large, but like five book stack over here with Sabrina Jeffries. So five of them are the Hellions of Halstead Hall. So we have How to Woo a Reluctant Lady. Then The Truth About Lord Stoneville, which is the first book in the series. Um, what? A Lady Never Surrenders. To Wed a Wild Lord. I feel like I've seen an excruciatingly similar cover to this somewhere else, but I don't know where. And then A Hellion in Her Bed. So the Hellions of Halstead Hall, um, in order to like get their inheritance, they all have to marry within a year or something like that. Um, I have not actually started that series yet. Um, and then Don't Bargain with the Devil, the last book that I need to read that I currently have in the School for Heiresses series. I have been hit or miss with this series as well, which is just one of those things. Some of them I just don't enjoy the tropes. Like one was like very political, didn't like it, things like that. Um, then I have another pretty big stack by one author. That is going to be Lisa Kleypas. Um, I am loving Lisa Kleypas all the time. So I have two of her Bow Street Runners series. 
um, worth any price and someone to watch over me love the color of this one honestly like 10 out of 10 for the color I've not started that series yet but clearly I will be starting it soon um, let's see then one of the Hathaway's books I hate holding up white books because you just can't see anything but this is married by morning it's like a companion and like a is it what is Leo an Earl or something like that and his sister's paid companion it's an enemies to lovers I think I'm gonna like that one I've loved that whole series and then I currently have three more in the Ravenel series the Ravenel series has been so good for me cold hearted break I gave three or four stars marrying winterborn I gave four stars no, Marrying Winterborn, I gave five stars. Hello Stranger, I gave five stars. Chasing Cassandra, I think I gave four stars. So, like, I have high hopes. So, we have Devil in Spring, which is going to be Pandora's story. She's, like, developing a board game. Very happy about that one. I'm excited to read it. The hold might have just come through in my library. So, that is great. And then we have Devil's Daughter. This is West's story. And I'm really excited to read it and I just read Hello Stranger and Wes was in it a lot and I really loved it and then um, Devil in Disguise which is the newest one in this series and this is like Merit um, which is Lillian's daughter so that'll be interesting I think oh my gosh another big stack I guess I could have done these <laughs> that have like seven books in them first guys my hair is just getting fluffier and fluffier this humidity actually it kills me all right, so Mary Balog, is that how you say her last name? I have the Survivor series by Mary Balog. So I am, you know, trying to read that because I read the arrangement and I really enjoyed it. So we have the Escape and then the Proposal. Um, only a Promise. So I don't love the covers like this either. And I especially don't love this ridiculously large change in what these books are covered like so if they start with the so the escape the proposal and then the arrangement seems like they look like that and then the new ones I guess the later ones in the series only a promise only enchanting only a kiss that one is actually really pretty um, and only beloved they're covered like this so here's my issue with that to me these four especially not that the book covers even matter but like these four look like historical fiction so like what I would think was going on in like only a kiss is like world I think this is World War two like that's that's almost what it looks like like her club or World War one like this doesn't look like what it should look like to me like I don't know um, I'm sure that choice was made for some reason that I don't know, but it just doesn't seem to me like that series goes together and maybe they reprinted. I don't know. Those are just the ones that I found, but that's, hold on. Let's see if this barcode has a year. Let's see if the barcode has a year. That was stupid. Like, um, is there not a title page? 2015 for that one for like these only a ones and then 2012 so not that much of a difference and other books published in those years look different so whatever anyway Gaylene Foley I have two books by her the first one is Secrets of a Scoundrel it's blurred by Stephanie Lawrence enchanting intriguing and fun I just love that stuff back too um and then One Night of Sin I think this is the night's miscellany or something series I feel like yes Lord Alec Knight I read one of those books quite enjoyed it All right then a couple by Mary Jo Putney so the first one is once a scoundrel this in like honestly this looks like a mystery to me like this looks like it would be a mystery set in an Italian villa so this is part of the rogues redeem series I got only a layered um, in a Goodreads giveaway, and I actually really enjoyed it. So I also have Once a Rebel, Once a Laird, Not Only a Laird. See, these look like not, like the step back does not look like what the book is supposed to be. Like I understand just having like a picture, but I feel like those step backs are fake. I'm getting kind of grumpy here. 
Okay, so The Duke's Guide to Correct Behavior by Megan Frampton. I've only read one other Megan Frampton book and I did not love it, so I'm trying to give her another chance here. Because, uh, again, someone that I've heard great things about, the book just didn't match for me, so I picked up another one when I saw it the other day, and fingers crossed that I love it. Then Stacey Reed. I have read one of Stacey Reed's anthologies before, but I've never read, like, one of her books. And I've heard fantastic things about the Sinful Wallflower series. Like, apparently, it's one that everyone loves. Like, any type of reader is going to love. So I've grabbed her Wicked Marquess, and I'm excited to read it. It's like a wallflower. It says that this guy was sneaking out of her bedroom. So, <laughs> spicy. Um, and then Sarah McLean, Ten Ways to Be Adored When Landing a Lord. Um, Sarah McLean is another one that I've heard great things about. I did try to read one of her books, and it just wasn't it for me. I just didn't enjoy it. I ended up DNFing it. But, again, I've heard so many good things about it, so I do want to give her another chance. And I feel like these, like, ones that are numbered, like, there's a couple that have, like, the numbers in them. I feel like people always say those are really great, so excited to see. Then I have, this is, this one is thick, like, the, we're looking at 454 pages. Very thick for historical romance, but it's by Vanessa Kelly, The Highlander's Irish Bride. I read The Highlander's Christmas Bride, I think, um, for a video around Christmas time and I actually really enjoyed it so I grabbed um, another book in that series. I only have two stacks left so I actually have gone through these a lot faster than anticipated. Love it. Okay so these are all going to be by Jennifer Ashley all part of the McKenzie's and McBride's series. So first I have rules for a proper governess, um, Lady Isabella's scandalous marriage, the Stolen Mackenzie Bride, The Many Sins of Lord Cameron, and A Mackenzie Clan Christmas. So I am pretty excited to get to all of those because I really loved The Sins of Lord, or The Madness of Lord Ian Mackenzie. I thought that one was so good. So I'm so excited to read the rest of them. And it's another one that I like, I put that one off for a really long time, and now I feel like I'm putting all of these off for no reason and I only have one stack left and oh, I'm about to, <laughs> it almost fell all right and this stack is all by the same author it is by Julianne Long so I discovered Julianne Long um this year I think well I picked up one of her books last year which is uh Between the Devil and Ian Eversee but I didn't read it until this year and I really liked it it's part of the Penny Royal Green series so I have quite a few books from the Penny Royal Green series here in front of me now, and then one other one. So we have It Started With a Scandal. The Legend of Lion Redman. Okay, I am so ready to read this. It is a five-star prediction for me. Um, it is like the last book in the series, and let's talk about how I started on book like 11, um, and this is the next one, but that is fine. I'm so excited to read this one. I've been waiting for my library hold to come through for about a hundred years, so I can't wait. It happened one midnight. A notorious countess confesses. The perils of pleasure. And like no other lover. So excited. So I liked Between the Devil and Ian Eversee. I thought it was really good. And then the other day I read I Kissed an Earl. I gave it five stars. It was like a high seas, high jinks type of romance that I didn't know that I needed. So good. I really liked it. I loved the characters. Thought it was great. So I am really excited to continue reading the Penny Royal Green series. Like I said, dying to read Lion Redmond's story. And then I have Beauty and the Spy, also by Julian Long, part of a different series. There's like a corner cut off of this cover, which really annoys me, but that is fine. So that is the last one on this TBR. Have I probably forgotten some? Yes. Um, but that's okay. I'm not going to beat myself up over it. Uh, there's definitely more books probably here that I have not read, but I just like kind of did a quick pursual of my bookcase and pulled out a bunch of them. So these are all books that I'm looking forward to reading. Some I'm a little apprehensive about, like the fairy tales ones, a little bit apprehensive, but honestly, I think that it's going to be a good experience. So I am happy to get to reading all of these. I really hope that I get to some of them soon. Um, I don't understand why I procrastinate the way that I do. So I'm really happy to get to some of them soon. And clearly I will be updating you guys on some of them as well. 
So that is all that I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. Bye.